BGMC. The biblical truth lives here. scriptures foretold of the anointed one, Yeshua HaMashiach. The Messiah Yeshua came to call the people back to the truth of His word and to follow that righteous path. Yeshua then called Jewish men to be His disciples, and after His death and resurrection, those Jewish men told the world about the Jewish Messiah. Now, after 2,000 years, Beth Goyim Messianic Congregation has that same calling of those Jewish men telling all people, both Jew and Gentile, about the proper ancient path, teaching the Route 66 King's Highway from Genesis through to Revelation, and how you need and can get back to the proper roots of the faith and a closer walk with God. Now, let's hear the message. Let's go get a blessing. Turn to the final two chapters of the Torah. The final two chapters of the Torah. Let's turn to Divarim, Deuteronomy, chapter 33. De Divarim 33 and 34. This is message P209. Parash number 54. Vaziot Habarcha. Sorry, I'm looking at a glare here. This is the blessings, okay? We're gonna, this is the final Torah portion. It shows the blessings and the curse. Uh, but but we, you know, we really discovered, it was very interesting when we, when we did the, uh, the Torah reading for the Shemitah, um, how chapter 34 ends with Moshe uh, dying and not being able to go into the Promised Land. It is very interesting, as we were discussing with uh, everybody, um, how, you know, we have the blessings and the curse, and it is um, fascinating how important leadership is, okay? It is important because Moshe was unable to go in because he made one mistake, and that's how important leadership is, leadership to be trained, and anybody who wants to be a leader, uh, be careful what you wish for because Moshe, the, the Torah ends with, with not being able to go in. All right, let's go on to, let's go on to slide number three. Slide number three. Uh, Divarim 33 has 29 verses. Okay, uh, what's interesting about this is Moshe's blessing to the tribes. Okay, Moshe's blessing to the tribes. Uh, the main characters are this, are Jehovah and Moshe. Okay, and let me just move this over here. And what it is, in the conclusion, is a very desirable thing to have an interest in the prayers of those who are about to depart to heaven. Okay? So it is interesting. We're going to go over in just an overview. Just remember this parash. It's a 45-minute to an hour teaching. If you want a full study on, <coughs> excuse me, on all the tribes, um, we have a, a three-month study on our website on the tribes, okay? We went over the tribes in depth, but we're just going over Moshe's part of it here, okay? It's just gonna be an overview. Okay, going on to slide number four, slide number four. We're gonna go to Devarim, Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse two. Um, this is a, a key verse. I very much recommend highlighting this in your, in your Bible. Jehovah came from Sinai, from Seir. He dawned on his people. Shone forth from Mount Paran, and with him were myriads of holy ones. At his right hand was a fiery law for them. Amen? Okay, so here we start out with a key part at Jehovah, the Father's right hand, because anytime you see Adonai, Dr. Stern was very uh, plain about using the word Adonai, and he so, told you why in this preface. Okay, for, this is where, you know, some. Uh, Gentiles who are uh, turning messianic, they don't understand about the respect of the name of Jehovah. And he said, you know, as a Jewish person, I wanted to show respect to the name uh, of, of the Father in heaven, the Eternal One. So he put Adonai, which is a, a familiar name 
and not the the uh, the uh, yud hey vav hey. But we see here that Adonai is written here, but we know is Yehovah. I feel very comfortable saying Yehovah because it's very simple. yud hey vav hey, very simple. Okay, so Yehovah says with him was somebody at his right hand who is a fiery law. Okay, the key to this verse is the words right hand. And those of us who are followers of Messiah, um, we all know that Yeshua sits at the right hand of the Father. The reference for that is Matthew 26, verse 64. We're not going to turn to it, just so if you want to write it in your notes for verse 2, a little margin, okay, that Yeshua sits at the right hand of the Father. So here, um, Moshe is saying, uh, Yehovah came from Sinai and he dawned on his people, because Yeshua is the light, we just uh, sang about that, okay? And at his right hand <coughs> was a fiery law, a fiery law. Okay, Yeshua burns off the chaff. You know, everybody you know, thinks, well, Yeshua, you know, Messiah is all love and fuzzy and all this other stuff. Actually, no. He came here to divide, and he said, he said in the Gospels, I have come here to set fire, and how I wish it was kindled. Okay? Um, so here the fire talks about you know, separation, fire purifies, fire uh, gets rid of viruses, okay? So the fiery law is something that is purifying you. The fiery law is something that's going to take out impurities. The fiery law is something that's going to inoculate, it's going to kill bacteria in you, okay? That's why you get a virus, you know, you get a fever, your body's trying to cook out the virus that's inside of it. Going on to slide number five, we're now going to look at verse four. Look at verse four. The Torah of Moshe commanded us as an inheritance for the community of Yaakov. This also is, is a very poignant verse out of all the Torah. To understand that our inheritance is in the contract that Jehovah gave to us. Okay, understand that if you want to get into the promised land, if you want to get into the promised land, you're going to need the contract to get into the promised land. Anytime you like, you buy a home or you buy a new car. There's all this paperwork and stuff like that, right? You know, and usually even for a car, there's usually you know a stack of papers. Okay, if you're taking a loan or something like that in America, okay. And if you're buying a house, I can remember buying my house, uh, you know, a stack of paper, I kid you not, was like that thick. It was ridiculous, okay? And here, if you want your inheritance from the Lord, I just want you to see your stack of papers, okay? So here, this, this, the Torah of, that Moshe commanded us is an inheritance, okay? It is something to be passed along. It is something to be taught. It is something to be respected. It is something that we should value highly. And this is what incenses me about the Christian who calls on the name of Jesus. Is you know, we're not under that law anymore. Uh, well, God says otherwise. You want your inheritance? You want your inheritance? Then the Torah is your inheritance because it's the Word. And this is what Yochanan said in John 1.1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the word was God. It's your inheritance. Okay? Now hold your place in Divarim because we're going to do a little bit of jumping tonight. Not much. Turn over to Matthew 25. Matthew 25, verse 33 and 34. Matthew 25, verse 33 and 34. And if you go to last year's cycle, I did a lot more of this going back and forth and showing you, you know, how the one ties in together with the other. And on our website, if you go into Beth Goyim, uh, under tour portions, uh, you'll see uh, you know, education and then tour portions. There's these 209 or 208 messages, okay? Actually, and I didn't get to last week's uh, message. I'm sorry, everybody, who kept coming to the website. With the, with the, the Sukkot and the Torah reading, the Shemitah, uh, I just ran out of time, okay? So here, Matthew 25, verse 33 and 34. The sheep he will place at his right hand, and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, 
you whom the Father has blessed. Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you from the founding of the world. Amen? So what was on his right? The fiery law. The law that purifies us from the pagans. What makes us different than the Muslims? Well, just about everything. But the word of God is what makes us different. The covenant of God. Because Ishmael is not part of the covenant. He was blessed, but God said he will always fight among his people. That's why the Iranians, the Assyrians, uh, I mean Persia, Persia is fighting Assyria right now in Syria. Isn't that interesting? If you read the book of Esther, you have that whole thing happening right in front of your eyes. And now, right now, in the, the country of modern-day Syria, the Persians, who are the Iranians, are fighting in Assyria. Interesting. All right? So here, this fiery law is to burn off the chaff. So here, Devarim 33, verse 4, uh, Moshe commanded the Torah to be an inheritance, and that's at the right hand in verse uh, 34 of uh, chapter 25 of the book of Matthew. Okay? So what is your inheritance? To be on that right hand of the Lord. Okay? To be on the right side of God. Going on to verse, uh, slide number six, sorry, slide number six. I put the chart there for you guys because we're going to start going through the blessings uh, of each of the tribes. Now, sometimes when I, you know, you, you get lost in who is who, okay? Whose mother is whose mother, okay? And, you know, okay, we all go back to Abraham, okay? And then Sarah and Hagar, okay, so you have the, the, the original wife, Sarah, and then Hagar becomes a concubine, then you got Ishmael. Let me just uh, give you, so you can see my pointer here. Okay? So you have Abraham had ha, a wife, Sarah, okay? And then uh, she didn't have children, so she said, here, take my, my, my maid. And then he had relations with Hagar, who then had Ishmael. And then there's a whole group that comes off that side. Okay? Then Sarah had Yitzhak. Okay, Yitzhak married Rebecca, and then you have Yaakov and Esau. Okay, so the promise goes to this line in the blue that you see here. Abraham, after Sarah dies, marries Keturah. Some people think it's Hagar. I do not. Okay, and then he, Keturah, at 120 years of age, he then had six more children. Go, Abraham. I just can't wait to meet you. Six more kids. Okay, at 120. So let's just say every year and a half he has another child. That's still a while. You know, he's got the lid to be a good old ripe old age and will still go in pretty strong. Okay, uh, so Keturah must have been you know, also pretty young. Okay, so then, so we follow this line because we're going to go, uh, not the Keturah line, we're going to follow the Sarah Yitzhak. Yitzhak marries Rebecca, uh, Rivka. Okay, then they have Yaakov. Esau sells his birthright, so it should have been Abraham, Yitzhak, and Esau, but Esau sold his birthright for a bowl of soup. Dork, okay? He didn't care about it, okay? Yaakov, you know, did not, you know, he followed what his mother said, and that he got some silly stuff that happened there, and then through that, he then has two wives and two concubines, which I don't highly, I don't suggest, you know, two wives are good enough, four is way too much. <laughs> Imagine two Britneys. Oh my goodness. Oh, I would I would feel sorry for that man. They gave each other a pledge. Okay. And so Yaakov has uh he he saw Rachel and he was like, oh, that is so fine, and a bag of chips. But then he worked for her for seven years, and then you know, the night he was supposed to get married, he got a little too uh uh happy and was a little too drunk. And um so he slept with Leah first because the family, you know, uh, tricked him. So then he finished out the marriage week with Leah, and then he married Rachel. And then Leah was blessed because she was a humble servant. So then, uh, so Leah has Reuven, uh, Dinah, Shimon, Levi, Yehuda, Issachar, and Zebulon. Okay, Rachel ha takes a long time for her to have any children. Yosef and Benjamin, she finally has, but she had given her ha handmaid Bilha, and uh, Bilha had Dan and Naphtali, uh, and then Leah also gave uh, Yaakov 
her handmaid, Zilpah. So Zilpah had Asher and Gat, okay? And then, um, so you need to know, like, who is the wives, because the blessings will change a little bit, okay? Because there is slight differences in Jehovah's order between a wife and a concubine. The children still get treated somewhat the same, but you see in the blessings, there's slight differences in what goes on. So that's why I said for the PowerPoint, it's for everybody to download. It's free. If you want to hit the donate button, that's great. Um, but we don't charge for God's word because God said his word is free. And if you want to hit the donate button, because this takes a lot of work to do stuff like this. Okay. But I, I, I like having pictures in front of me, don't you? You know, it helps you like, who, wait, who's, wait, who, wait, wait, go back to the chart. <laughs> Because it helps, you know, like, is that Rachel? You know, Ra Rachel's easy to remember because she just says Joseph and Benjamin, okay? But then, like, well, Gad, Nasher, and, Dan, you know, so, uh, and then, then Tamar pops in there, okay? And then Manasseh and Ephraim get raised up by their, by their grandfather, okay, from Joseph, okay? So going on to the next slide, let's start looking at the, the blessings that Moshe gave to each of of the children, okay? Um, and it's interesting note, they are, they are very different than the blessings that uh, Yisrael gave to these children in this grouping, okay? So if we look at Devarim 33, verse 6, verse 6, let Reuben live and not die out, even though his numbers grow few, okay? Now, Reuben made a great mistake, okay? Uh, he uh, was as unstable as water, okay? And he, he did some things that he shouldn't have done, climbing into the concubine's couch. Um, he defiled his father's bed. And this propagates this, this particular tribe, okay? But it isn't that they're going to be totally wiped out. God never wipes out any of the tribes in full, you know? It is, you know, what you do see a lot of times in Christendom, well, Dan doesn't get into heaven. Dan does get into heaven if you read the book of Ezekiel and you see the final vision of heaven and the final temple that comes down out of heaven. There is a Dan gate. He just doesn't happen to be, be used to call back Messiah because of the things that the, the patriarchs do, okay? And what that does, if you really study the tribes, you'll find out, you know, there are characteristics that really stand out. And those people that come from those tribes, if you do a DNA test, like I said, there's, there's a nominal um, database and you can really get deep into the DNA because there are code markers that God put in the bloodline, in the DNA. You'll find certain characteristic traits, like I come from the tribe of Benjamin, okay? Um, you know, I, I'm much more mellow than I used to be. People think, people think I'm bad. You should have seen me beforehand, okay? Um, so, but it is a characteristic trait of the Benjamite to be very, very, um, don't uh, do that, Lev's father, okay? Um, so, <laughs> um, where, like, the Benjamites, one, are left-handed. They throw with their left, okay? And I'm left-handed. Okay, we well, say, well, there's a lot of left-handed people, but there's other characteristic traits. There are other characteristics. I have, I have the peanut gallery here in the sanctuary. They gave each other a pledge. Okay, um, so Benjamites are very hot-headed. They are extremes. Uh, okay, I'm an extreme to, for the Lord and for his blessings. Okay, so... Here, Reuben did some things, and throughout the scriptures, you see that tribe keeps those characteristics, and that's why Moshe is saying he's going to not die out, but he's going to grow few in number because of the characteristic traits of not honoring Torah, not honoring the Father in heaven, not honoring the patriarchs. They, they have this, this uh, problem that they constantly do throughout the scripture. Going on to slide number eight, we go on to verse seven. Of Yehuda, he said, hear Yehovah, the cry of Yehuda. Bring him in to his people. Let his own hands defend him. 
but you help him against his enemies. Okay? So Yehuda, we know that Yeshua is from the uh, line of the tribe of Yehuda. Uh, Yehuda signifies professing, confessing, and praising. The tribe was both a praying and praising type of people. Yehuda means one who praises God. Okay? You want to praise the Lord. He said, hear the cry of Yehuda. Bring him into his people because the Jewish people will only cry out for Messiah when they're crying. Okay? They, they, they have to get chastised for them to not want to be part of the world anymore. And that's what we're waiting for. Okay? Because it doesn't, the Christians are not going to call back the Mashiach. Okay? They're not going to be raptured out. The people that call back the Lord are 144,000 virgin Jewish men of, you know, from certain tribes. Okay? So we have to cry out. So if Yehuda said, hear Yehovah and cry, the cry of Yehuda. And Yeshua said, you know, said how he said, how I long to gather you under my wings. Like a mother hen gathers her chicks. He cries for us. He wants us to just yield to his way. Okay? And Yehuda will defend him, but the Lord will help against Yehuda's enemies. Okay? Because they are a professing, a confessing, and a praising tribe. Okay? There are many positive traits about the tribe of Yehuda that goes through. And if you go back, well, who is Yehuda's mom? Well, let's go back to the chart. Wait, wait, who's Yehuda's mom? Oh, okay, Leah. Okay? And Yehuda is tri tribe number four, because Reuben, Simeon, Le Levi, and Yehuda. Okay? So he's number four. Four, what signifies four, the lights of heaven. The Lord made the great lights of heaven, the sun and the moon and the stars, for time, seasons, days, months, and years. Okay? So it's like, okay, then you start delving into who is who. Like I said, there's a three-month study on the tribes uh, on our website that I put together all this research as much as I can find and you know, discern the information, make sure it lined up with Scripture, and things of that nature, okay? So Yehuda is Leah's fourth son, okay? She said, I'm going to praise the Lord now um, because the Lord has given her a fourth son. Understand in Hebrew, um, I know this might sound horrible to the ladies, but to have a son is, uh, was a very positive thing, even though we need ladies to bring forth children, okay? Um, it was a very great blessing to have male children, okay? Let me just go back to the slide. Okay, now we're going to go on to slide number uh, 9. Slide number 9, we're now going to look at verse 8 through 10. Of Levi, he said, Let your tumim and your umim, urim, sorry, urim, urim, be with your pious ones, whom you tested at Massah, whom you struggled at Meribah Spring. Of his father and mother, he said, I don't know them. I didn't acknowledge his brothers or children, for he observed your word and he kept your covenant. They will teach Yaakov your rulings, Israel your Torah. They will set incense before you and the whole burnt offering on your altar. Amen. So we know that Le Levi or Levi, whichever way they want to say it, they are the intercessors for Israel. They are the priesthood that serves in, in the temple, the Beit, Beit HaMikdash. Okay. Uh, we have Aaron's line, but Aaron comes from Levi, okay? So the Tumim and the Urim is the, the, the part that would be underneath the breastplate next to Aaron's heart, and you throw them as a dice, and the Lord will then decide, you know, for uh, which, let's say, for the, the Azazel, for Yom Kippur that we just went through, okay? Which, which goat would be the Azazel and which would be the offering, okay? The other part about this is verse 10, uh, Moshe is saying they're going to teach Yaakov, now the rulings, uh, and then also Israel. Okay, this is a very important part. Yaakov, uh, when you see Yaakov, that means it's the sons of Israel, Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. When you see Israel, because we were a mixed multitude that left, this is the the the. the the delineation from the tribes to everybody who wants to be grafted in. And how do you understand that? Well, Ruth 
said to her mother-in-law, Naomi, wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your God will be my God. And from that point, she became a believer. Okay, she came, became part of Israel. Okay, she wasn't natural born, but she was engrafted in there in the book of Ruth, which is in the Old Testament. And you see, they will teach, Levi will teach Yaakov uh, your rulings, Israel your Torah, teaching all the nation. This is why Isaiah 56, verse 7, why the name of this congregation, <coughs> excuse me, is Beth Goim. Because God said, my house will be called a house of prayer for all people. All people. Well, Israel was already there, right? Or Yaakov was already there. So for all nations, okay? So it is very important to understand this, um, that Levi is burdened uh, of the blessing of the appointment of, of the Levites, okay? Dignified the sacred uh, office of the priesthood. It is a very important job that we, we, we didn't honor, so God had to chastise us, okay? The other part about we see terms of mother and father. We see in verse 9 of his father and mother, he said, I don't know them. He didn't acknowledge his brothers or children, for he observed your word. This is the other part where Yeshua said, pick up your cross, okay, and follow me. Okay, you, you hold father or mother or brother or sister above the word of God, then you're not worthy to follow Yeshua, okay? But the, this is com that comes from verse 9, okay? Comes from verse 9. Going on to slide number 10, we're now going to move to Benjamin, okay? A Benjamin, he said, Jehovah's beloved lives securely. He protects him day after day. He lives between his shoulders. Okay, this is a very important part because um, the shoulders is, you know, what, what is between your shoulders? Well, one, for some people, their brain is between their shoulders. For other people, they sit on it. Okay, so for some people, your brain, you know, because it's between your shoulders, it's your head. This is everything that's, that you're about, your mind, your spirit. Okay, but the other part is Jehovah's beloved lives securely. He protects him day after day. Why? Because the Beit HaMikdash, the temple, would be on Benjamin's land in his, between his shoulders. Benjamin had a very small portion, but Yerushalayim is on Benjamin's land. Okay, the beloved of the Lord shall dwell, safe, dwell in safety by him. Okay. Because Benjamin, they're very good fighters, extraordinarily good fighters. And when you know you want to have a good fighting team, you go to the Benjamites. Okay, they'll do things, you know, to it to an end degree mo more so than some of the other tribes. Okay, uh, and we we know that that some kings came from the tribe of Benjamin. He lives between his shoulders. Okay, where our spirit lives. Also, between your shoulders, you have your heart, okay? You have the nephesh and, you know, the, the, the soul and the spirit, which are two different things. You have your mind and your heart that got to get together. So you have to have security in those two parts. Going on to verse, uh, slide number 11, we're now going to look at verse 13 through 16. Now, of Yosef, he said, may Jehovah bless his land with the best from the sky, for the dew and what comes from the deep beneath, with the best of what sun makes grow, with the best of what comes up each month, with the best from the mountains uh, of old, with the best from the eternal hills, with the best from the earth and all that fills it, and the favor of him who lived in the bush. May blessings come on the head of Yosef, on the brow of the prince among his brothers. We understand, you know, from reading the whole of Torah, that Yosef is the beloved of the Lord. He was used. He persevered. He is a foreshadow of the Mashiach, where his brothers didn't even recognize him because he was down in Egypt. He was speaking in another language. He was speaking through an interpreter. Okay? But here, this blessing that Moshe is giving, uh, the best from the sky. Now, what would be the best from the sky? The proper amount of rain, the proper amount of sun, okay? Good weather, okay? The dew, that comes next, the dew. What, 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 
what uh, represents the dew, okay? The manna, the word that comes from heaven, the best from the sky, the word that comes from heaven. The dew, when you, know, you get dew that comes on your plants each and every day, it's a great watering because it's a perfect water from heaven, okay? Uh, and for what comes from the deep beneath, what would be the deep beneath? That would be fish from the ocean, food from the ocean, okay? The best of what the sun makes grow. You see that uh, of Yosef, this beloved of his father, the favorite son of his father, gets the best of everything that comes from the Lord, okay? And Yosef, we know, persevered for 13 years because he was 17 when his brother sold him into slavery, and then he was 30 when he became the second in charge in all of Egypt. Okay, so for 13 years, even though he did nothing wrong, he got sold by his brothers. Uh, in Potiphar's house, he did nothing wrong, but the woman lied about him. And then he got put in prison. He did nothing wrong there. And he, he, st he never left the Lord's side. Okay, if you follow this pattern, then you'll be blessed with the land that is the best. Okay, uh, bless his land with the best from the sky. The same goes for everybody is that you have this opportunity if you don't leave the Lord's side, if you become a good servant of the Lord. Yosef gets the best of everything because his life was an example and a foreshadow of the Messiah. Okay, going on to slide number 12. Slide number 12, let's look at verse 18 and 19. Of Zebulon, he said, Rejoice, Zebulon, as you go forth and you, Issachar, in your tent. They will summon peoples on the mountains and they off, they're offer righteous sacrifices, for they will draw from the abundance of the seas and from the hidden treasures in the sand. Okay? This is a prophecy in verse 19 that speaks of what just happened in Israel a couple of years ago, where they found oil. Okay? Off the coast of Zebulon's territory, they found oil. Okay, they found oil, uh, natural gas, in uh, the hidden treasures in the sand. Okay, I didn't want to believe it. I read this and I'm like, what treasures are they going to find in the sand? What, King Tut's tomb or something like that? But it was fascinating. You know, a few years, a bunch of years ago, somebody said, you know, you should invest in this company. And had I invested, I probably wouldn't be doing what I'm doing right now. If I invested $1,000, oh, that, that, that skyrocketed. Okay, but Zebulon... Uh, uh, goes forth in Yisachar uh, in the tents. Tents meaning a home. Okay? Zebulon going forth, bringing out the word. Okay? Uh, summoning people to the mountains, to the high places. Zebulon is going to, um, and Yisachar are going to be summoning people to the high places. Where? Yerushalayim, because Yerushalayim is on a high place. Uh, because they withdraw from abundance. Um, they're going to offer righteous sacrifices. How does one offer a righteous sacrifice unless you know what a righteous sacrifice is? Okay? Um, they will call people to the mountains. This is a very important part about these two people. Drawing people saying, come, let's go to the mountain of the Lord. Okay? Come, Moshe, you know, went to see the, you know, the burning bush. Okay? You had to go to this place. Okay? When you go up, you want to go up to the high places. You know, Satan always wants the high places, but see, Zebulon and Issachar are calling people to the high places. Uh, that's what's so interesting about your high place there, Pastor Oni, and Beth Yeshua, where you're located. It's a high place. It is a place of righteous sacrifices. Going on to the next slide. The next slide, we're on slide number 13. We're going to look at verse 20. Of Gad, he said, blessed is he who makes Gad so large he lies there like a lying, tearing arm and scalp. Okay? So Gad is a, is, is a troop. It's a military organization. And one of the things uh, that I designed here for our, our congregation is we have all these banners in our sanctuary. So you can see over here, Gad uh, is a troop. It's a military troop. Um, uh, it's a large military troop. Okay? Blessed is this military troop. Uh, they lay there like a lion, you know, like a lion. You don't want to wake up a lion, okay? Because when you let, wake up that lion, he tears your arm and tears your scalp off, okay? Uh, 
one tearing arm and cra- uh, tearing the arm uh, with the crown of the head. Okay, so he's going to take apart kings. Okay, Gad, this troop is going to be a strong military uh, organization, and they're going to take a, when it's in, tearing apart the scalp. What's on the scalp is a crown. Okay, so he's going to be taking apart kings. Okay, um, and that you get from First Chronicles five eighteen. Okay, going on to the next slide. Um, we're on slide fourteen. Slide fourteen. Of Dan, he said, Dan is a lion cub, leaping forth from Basham. Now this is um, what a lot of people on new believers. Uh, they're like Dan. A lion c- cub does things without thinking. Okay, a cub. Uh, is sort of like a teenager where they uh, talk about stuff and then they think about the ramifications uh, later of, of what their actions are going to cause because they haven't thought things through. Okay? So Dan was the same way. Dan, um, you know, in, in the original blessing, he's, uh, he bites the, the, the leg of the, hor- the horse and the rider falls off backwards. So here, once again, uh, Moshe is being used by the Lord as a prophet Dan is a lion cub. He makes a lot of mistakes. He's impetuous. Okay, he, uh, d- you know, open, uh, ready, shoot, aim. You know, instead of ready, uh, aim, shoot. Okay, ready, shoot, aim. That that's more like what you would get from the cu- the reference here. The key part is a cub leaping forth from Bashan. Okay, leaping forth is not uh, very practical. Um, and not very uh, slick, okay? You know, so here, leaping forth, leaves yourself exposed. It's also a lion cub, lets you know that they would not think things through totally before acting on it, okay? That's interesting about Dan. Going on to verse uh, 23 of Naphtali, he said, You, Naphtali, Satisfied with favor and full of blessings from Jehovah, take possession uh, of the sea and the south. Okay, the south um, um, is a very interesting part of where the tabernacle is. Okay, the west and the south, taking the words as referring not to geographical position but to natural characteristics, the sea and the sunny district. The possession of Naphtali included nearly the whole west coast of the Sea of Galilee, okay? Taking possession of the sea and the south, okay? Um, it's very important to have that because one is a source of water, one is a source of fishing, one is a source of food, okay? That means if you're going to be able to fish, that means you're going to be satisfied. Um, the other part of this, which is beautiful, f- uh, full of blessings from Jehovah, okay? So Naphtali is this... Uh, Doe and it's leaping, and it's a very sure footed animal. The south, okay, and how the queen of the south came to ask from Shlomo's uh, knowledge, okay, so it's very, very important. Going on to slide 24, I mean, slide 16, verse 24 of Asher, he said, May Asher be the most blessed of sons, may he be the favorite among his brothers, and bathe his feet. And oil, okay. This is the other part that just happened not too long ago, where Asher's uh, land is. They found oil, okay. So I couldn't believe it when they found it. I'm like, wow, you know, not that I didn't believe the word of God, but it's like just amazing, okay. Um, Asher is the most blessed of sons, okay. Asher um, making food fit for a king is the original blessing, okay. So he's going to serve kings. He's going to be bringing food to kings. And the kings need to trust in Asher. So here he's most blessed because he's trusted. Okay, If you're going to make food for a king, an original blessing, and now you're still a favorite among his brothers, that means he's a, he's a peacemaker. Okay, And then bathe his feet in oil means that you're going to have a blessed life. You're going to be walking on a path blessed with children. Uh, Asher be blessed with children with large numbers. Uh, his tribe had 53,400 men for war. Okay, so uh, um, 
he was like Abraham, having lots of kids, okay? Um, and uh, have, uh, children are a blessing from heaven because then if you go to war, you have a big uh, troop to go to war with. Um, going on to slide number 17. Uh, this is a very interesting passage part. Verse 26 to 29. Yes, Sharon, there is no one like God riding through the heavens to help you. Riding on the clouds in His majesty, the God of old is, dwelling, is a dwelling place with everlasting arms beneath. He expelled the enemy before you, and He said, destroy. So Israel lives in security. The foundation of Yaakov is alone in the land of grain and new wine where the skies drip with dew. Happy are you, Israel, who is like you, a people saved by Jehovah, your defender helping you in your sword of triumph. Your enemies will cringe before you, but you will trample down their high places. Once again, we're speaking about high places where the Lord is uh, enabling Israel. Yeshurun um, is a, a pet name, a symbolic name for describing Israel's ideal character. Okay? He call it, it's sort of like a pet name. It's your ideal character that we see in verse uh, 26. There is no one like God riding through the heavens helping you. That means God is our help. We don't, that's what the, the people of Israel need to stop focusing on anybody else and focusing on their God. Okay? There's no one like our God. Okay? And that's a blessing that's extended to those who wish to follow Torah and the Mashiach Yeshua. Okay? Um, he is our defender if we follow in his footsteps if we follow his statutes, if we follow Messiah's example, okay? Your enemies will cringe before you, okay? This is why, um, you know, Israel really hasn't been fully attacked except for the Six-Day War, okay? The War of Independence. It, you have supposedly a billion Muslims. Why don't you guys just get your tanks and ride them on into Jerusalem, you know? You guys are so big and bad, Mr. Muslim Guslam, okay? But our God puts... His fear inside of you. Your enemies will cringe. And that's why Israel is not being attacked just yet. But we are falling farther and farther away from God because we are not in our ideal character. We have a secular government, and even the Israeli, you know, the, the Hebrews, you know, they have so much Talmud still in them instead of just the word of God. Just do what it says, and then God will defend us. Going on to slide 18. We're now going to go to chapter 34. It's got 12 verses, so we only got a couple of slides. This will be finishing up the Torah cycle. Okay? The contents of this particular ch uh, chapter is Moses' death. Okay? Vision and death of Moshe. We now enter a third character beside Jehovah and Moshe. We enter in Yehoshua. Um, then the conclusion of this chapter, uh, which we, we spoke about at length during uh, our, our reading during the Shemitah, was it's fascinating and, and a warning. for you know We're supposed to be a body of leaders. We're really supposed to be a body of leaders. And um, Moshe gets to see the promised land, and in the natural, he doesn't get to go. We know on the mountain of transfiguration that Moshe's feet does touch the promised land. But what is the key here is that leadership requires obedience more so than the regular congregation. And when you fail, um, the blood of the, those that you fail with, because you're the leader, is on your hands. And in um, Peter's writings, Kepha's writings, there is a place lower than hell for some of the angels. And I believe, I strongly believe, that those leaders who are not trained, um, who fail and lead people astray, they'll be in the same place as some of those angels that came against Jehovah in a place lower than hell, because too much is given, much is required. Okay? Moses, you know, took God's glory, um, and the Lord didn't allow him to go into the promised land that we see in this chapter. And I think it's fascinating that it ends the Torah, okay? Because there's so many blessings that are there for our taking, but we don't follow through. Going on to uh, the next slide, to slide number 19, uh, we look at verse 1 through 4, chapter 34, verses 1 through 4. Now Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, 
to the top of the Pisgah, that means the ridge, which is opposite Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the land, Galad, as far as Dan, and all of Naphtali in the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, and all the land of Yehuda as far as the western sea. And then they gave in the, pl in the plain of the valley of Jericho, the city of the palm trees as far as Zoar. Jehovah said to him, This is the land concerning which I swore to Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your own eyes, but you will not cross over there. Amen? This is the price of leadership. And this is why I take my job as, as a rabbi here extraordinarily serious. I understand that God has many blessings for me, uh, especially in the next life, okay? But it's a, it's a wonderful job that I have an opportunity to do, but it's also a very scary job because of what we just read there in verse 4. Moshe was a friend of God, okay? God spoke to him face to face. They had conversations more so than any other person that ever lived. And God was so angry that Moshe made one mistake, okay? Granted, it was a rough week. His sister just died, okay? And, but there was no, there's no um, mistakes that a leader can make without being taken down. So the Lord says, go look. Here you can look, you can look, you can look. You got there, but you can't. It just went out. Now there's audio back. Sorry. We use up the batteries to every extent here. We use up everything. Because the Lord, you use up everything the Lord has. I will give your descendants, I have let you see it with your own eyes, but you will not cross over. The descendants get the promise. Okay? Moses didn't make any other mistakes. But this is how important our role is as leaders. And it, it extends to the people who follow Messiah because we are supposed to be a nation of priests, representatives of the Lord. Going on to the next slide, slide number 20. We're now going to look at verse 6. He was buried in the valley across from Bet, uh, Bet Peor in the land of Moab, but to this day no one knows where his grave is. Okay. Now this is very interesting, this passage, because we, we don't have much insight into this in the Torah. But hold your place there and turn to the book of Jude. Jude chapter 1. Jude chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. Because Jude, Yehuda, gives us a little insight to what happened to Moshe's body. Okay? Jude chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. When Mikhail, one of the ruling angels, took issue with the adversary, arguing over the body of Moshe, he did not dare to bring him bring against him an insulting charge, but said, May Yehovah rebuke you. However, these people insult anything they don't understand, and what they do understand naturally without thinking like animals, by these things they are destroyed. So in verse 9, uh, you see Michael, Mikhail, and Hasatan uh, arguing over the body of Moshe, and Michael, Mikhail, the archangel, said, you know, May Yehovah rebuke you. Uh, I don't know where Yehuda got this information because it's not found in the Tanakh, but it's found in, in the Brit Hadashah, and I believe the Brit Hadashah to be the Word of God. So um, I don't know, you know, but we have it there to know that Moshe did die, okay, and Michael did something with Moshe's body, okay? What he did with it? I don't know. That's all we got, okay? That's all, all the information. I mean, the Talmud you know, has things written. I'm like, where do they get it? Uh, I don't know. So, you know, you smoke enough pot, you'll, you'll come up with anything. Okay? So here, uh, we only get it from Yehuda. Okay? Going on to the next slide. Uh, go to verse 7. Uh, go back to Devarim 34, verse 7. Devarim 34, Deuteronomy 34, verse 7. Moshe was 120 years old when he died with eyes undimmed and vigor undiminished. Okay, So here he was 120 years old, 
And because the 40 years were up, okay, so because you have three sections of Moshe's life. Uh, first one, the Lord said uh, after the flood that man will only live to be 120. Yes, there are exceptions, but it's not the rule. Okay, Moshe was the rule. Okay, he lived in 40 years in, in Egypt. Then he lived 40 years in the desert. Then he lived 40 years as a leader of Israel. Okay, so here you have the 120 years. You have the three sections of his life. And uh, those who do follow the Lord, you know, um, your eyes will be undimmed and your vigor undiminished. It is interesting that he only had two children. Okay, so because uh, most of the leaders had more than, more than that, that amount of children. But Moshe, I guess, ministry took him away from his wife, okay? Or maybe, you know, so they only, had two, they only had two kids. And we don't know much about Moshe's kids either. It's very interesting, too. In the scripture, we don't have much about that. So numbers of, uh, yep, uh, but his wife was, anyway. Um, 40 is the number of completion. Going on to slide 22, we're going on to verse 9. Yehoshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moshe had laid his hands on him, and the people of Israel heeded him and did not uh, did what Jehovah had ordered Moshe. Amen? Once again, you see the proper order. Anybody who takes on a leadership position and doesn't have this order done to him, you're demonic. It's that simple. Okay? Yehoshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit, and Moshe laid his hands on him. It has to be a transferring. It has to be done in front of people. It has to be done from an anointed person and rabbi to rabbi, okay? It has to be done in this proper order. Because if you don't, you are following the devil and you will not be blessed, okay? Yehoshua uh, means uh, Jehovah is salvation. Son of Nun, Nun is the fisherman. So salvation, Jehovah's salvation is the son of the fisherman. Hmm, interesting that a single man took us into the promised land. Yehoshua, the son of Nun, was full of the Spirit. And yes, Yeshua is the son, and he is the fisherman. That's why he said, I will make you fishers of men. Going on to slide 23, uh, we're going on to verse 10. Since that time there has not arisen in Israel a prophet like Moshe, whom Yehovah knew Face to face. Now, this, this tends to mess with people because nobody can see the face of the Lord. If you look at the, 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 defini the Hebrew defini definition for face or panim or pane, okay, it means the presence or the person, okay? It doesn't say the glory. Uh, Jehovah knew uh, Moshe face to face. It doesn't say he knew the glory, you know, because Moshe did ask, let me see your glory. And the father said, no, you can't see my glory, but you can see my presence. Okay, it's a difference in 1B, because you have face, panim is face, or face as panim. Anytime you hear m at the end of a word, it is plurality, such as Elohim, plurality, panim, face as, and 1B, it is presence or the person. So Moshe spoke with Jehovah, presence, to his face. His presence was there. It's really a beautiful understanding. And nobody else, uh, since that time, there has not arisen in Israel somebody like Moshe that knew the Lord face to face. Going on to slide 24, the last two verses of the Torah. What signs and wonders Jehovah sent him to perform in the land of Egypt upon Pharaoh, all his servants and all his land? What might was in his hand, what great terror he invoked before his, the eyes of all Israel. It's interesting that we would end the Torah on this type of note. It's fascinating that God is saying, don't forget my signs. Don't forget that if you follow me, I'll send terror. You won't even have to do anything. You know, like Israel left, left Egypt. How? What, how did they leave Egypt? Was it a great army that led them out? No. It's great signs and wonders. Now, this is very interesting because, hold. Uh, well, actually, you don't need to hold your place because we're done with the Torah. Let's go to our last part of this, uh, this Parash teaching, Romans 11. Romans 11. 
This is a very key passage from the rabbi, Rav Shaul, Paul the Emissary. Romans 11, verse 20 through 22. Romans 11, verse 20 through 22. Got it? True, but so what? They were broken off because of their lack of trust. However, you keep your place only because of your trust. So don't be arrogant. On the contrary, be terrified. For if God did not spare the natural branches, he certainly won't spare you. So take a good look at God's kindness and his severity on, one, on, on the one hand, severity toward those who fell off, but on the other hand, God's kindness towards you, provided you maintain yourself in that kindness, otherwise you too will be cut off. Amen? So the key word here that ties the two pieces together is the word terror or terrified. Okay? We're ending the Torah with the word terror. Okay? So here, Rab Shaul is saying, don't think that you're, you're going to be treated any different, you Gentiles. You're going to be treated the same with blessings and the same with curses if you call on the name of Messiah and you believe. Be terrified because those who don't follow the Lord and don't follow His ways get terrorized by God who is the one who is almighty. Well, in the Simchat Torah, we rejoice in God's word and we finish another Torah cycle. I bid you an amen and an amen. Shalom. This is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman. I would personally like to thank you for tuning in to the Remnants Call each and every week. You can listen to the full message on our website, BethGoyim.org. If you have drawn closer to the King of Kings, learned more about Him today, we are blessed. If you are blessed by these messages, please consider a donation to our ministry. You can go to our website, BethGoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M.org. And click on the Donate button. You do not have to have a PayPal account to donate. All you need is a debit card. Once again, thank you very much for listening to The Remnants Call. If you have not taken your first steps to be born again, just ask God's help. Remember, it's His loving grace that has come to find you. No one is worthy or able to reach God, but God can reach us, and He's reaching out to you now. Just open your heart and let Him in. His arms are open, and the blessing of salvation and eternal life are waiting for you. Don't let it wait any longer. Shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you and give you his shalom. Shalom. My name is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman, and I invite you to come to visit our congregation. If you are in the tri-state area, come out and visit with us on Shabbat. We are a congregation of Jews and Gentiles, living as one in the Messiah Yeshua. BGMC is a place of true worship. The focus never wanders from the Hebraic roots of our faith. Beth Goyim is rooted in the Word of God from Bereshit through to the book of Revelation. Messiah's strong words against man-made tradition are carefully recorded in Matthew 7. That is the reason we only follow the straight-up instructions found in Scripture, truly the way, the truth, and the life. If you're looking for a deeper walk with Adonai, come out for our Tuesday evening Bible study called Messianic Torah Time. Come, spend the day with us on any Shabbat. We start at 11 a.m. with the sound of the ancient Hebrew shofar. Next, we offer our King praise and worship in English, 
Hebrew, and Spanish. After worship, we review the headlines in the previous week's news from around the globe, especially news from the Holy Land, Israel. We don't just list the news headlines as current events, but we comb through the scriptures searching for clues to understand what they mean and then to help pinpoint prophetically our current position on Adonai's clock. After digesting all that modern information, we leave the world behind as we journey with our Adonai deep into his eternal word, not with just one or two scriptures, but usually seven or more scriptures. The spiritual nourishment and the richness of his kingdom become accessible to the ones who share this special time and seek them out. The day does not end there. Because Shabbat is so special to him, there is always so much more that our king desires to share. So instead of separating and leaving, we stay together as a family for potluck lunch and an afternoon study of our king's word. We close the Shabbat together with the reading of the New Week's Parashah. That's the Torah portion. Even after those blessings, Many of us just can't get enough. So the members bring prepared homemade foods to share while we all enjoy an uplifting movie together. If all that information is not quite enough, you can check out our website where you will find over 200 video teachings and biblical holy day studies. Under Messianic Torah Time, the Hebrew Roots button, you'll discover free studies on many, many different topics, including PowerPoint slide presentations. If Beth Goyim sounds like a place you'd love to visit, but you live outside the tri-state area, there is still a way to connect with us. We stream live on the internet on Tuesday, Thursday, and Shabbat. The website is www.bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M.org. Our phone number is 973-338-7800 or 978-2-YESHUA. That's 978, the number 2, YESHUA. Shalom.